Good morning, friends. Welcome to our Tuesday morning Bible study. I'm Reverend Jack Wooten, and uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, as we come now to hear your word proclaimed, we pray that you would help us to just embrace the truth that you have to share with us as your children, as your people, as your church, and that you would then empower us, Lord, to live that truth out bearing great fruit for your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look at a passage from 1 John, uh, the third chapter. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. John writes, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. And may the Lord add his blessing to this reading from his word. I'm doing something a little bit different this morning because I'm doing this study by playing off of a, a pastoral letter that I included in our newsletter for the month of September because I think this is important enough that we hear this and I want to explain on it a little more so if you get the newsletter you'll have kind of an outline of the Bible study from this morning but this passage that we find in John seems especially fitting for this very confusing time uh, that we're living in right now you know there are a lot of things that we just don't know right now things that we just took for granted six months ago because they were just so commonplace to us, you know, uh, and we're asked with to do a lot of things that we, we're not sure if it really helps or if it doesn't help. And uh, we're also, you know, left with a lot of questions, questions that give people anxiety, like, you know, when can we resume uh, things like our fellowship meals at church? Or when can we resume uh, our worship or our Sunday school? Uh, when can we start uh, having tailgating at our college football games again? Things that we're just, you know, we never thought we would lose. Uh, now we're wondering when we can do them again. And so it, it, it brings a lot of questions to our minds. And there are a lot of other things that bring anxiety during this time too uh, with the uh, calls for social justice uh, and also uh, with uh, all of the uh, political issues that are going on right now uh, besides just the social justice issue. Uh, you know, it's, it's worrisome and, and even frightening for many of those of us who grew up uh, during the uh, the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, we uh, endured the Cold War and we watched the Soviet Union uh, collapse under socialism, which, which doesn't work, as their, their industry failed and their people starved. And only now to hear a younger generation of Americans who didn't go through that and, and who don't understand that a demand that our country move to socialism. So uh, we're left wondering, you know, what is going to be the next normal for us in America? As the country uh, just holds its collective breath in nervous anticipation of the outcome of this next very divisive presidential election that's coming up and it's being held in the midst of a pandemic and it brings on questions of how do we vote do we vote in person do we mail it in and and there's such great distrust of the uh, the mail service and and uh, that voting process and so 
in all of this stuff, this passage of scripture from 1 John just calls out to us as Christians to breathe. You know, just, just to stop a moment. To follow Jesus instead of following along behind all of these things uh, uh, that are going on around us, behind all of the movements, behind all of those who are, are trying to lead us this way and lead us that way. We who follow Jesus Christ need to just turn away from all the hate, from all the fear, and turn our attention fully on his love for us. We are not being made into the image of any political creation. We're not being made into the image of any design of mankind. We are being made into the image of God in Jesus Christ. That's what we need to remember as Christians. Listen to that passage from John again. What manner of love the Father has given to us in naming us children of God. What does that mean for us? I mean, think about that a minute. If we're children of God, if he is our heavenly Father, then we get all the benefits of being his. All the perks of being his children. And think what that means. When it's your child, there's a very special love that we have for our own. We develop an intimate relationship with our own children, a closer relationship than we do with the children of our friends or our neighbors. And it's not that we don't care about them, but we just can't have that relationship with them that we have with our own. We provide for our own children's needs, all their needs. We protect our own children fiercely. And God does the same for us as his children. He loves us with a special type of love. He calls us to be in a close, a personal, intimate relationship with him because he wants to provide for us. He wants to protect us. He wants to guide us into the ways and the the different opportunities in life that are the absolute best for us. And that's why the world doesn't know us, John says, because they're not God's children. They don't know God as a father to them. And so they do not know us as children of God. Only those who accept the salvation of Jesus Christ are covered by his blood, and are invested in the new covenant. We live under the new covenant of Jesus Christ. Only those people willing to do that become children of God. And it's important for us who have been God's children for a longer time to help our newer siblings, our newer brothers and sisters in Christ to understand what it means to be in his family, what it means to take on the name of Christian, the, what, it, what it means to be able to, to lay aside our worries and anxieties. And a very important lesson for us to learn and to practice and to share with these newer Christians is trust. Learning to trust our Heavenly Father, which is completely different from trusting to our own judgment and our own will, from, from having been on our own, constantly fearful, always uh, drawn towards destruction by the enemy. But now we have a heavenly father. We have a guardian who calls us to turn away from fear and instead embrace peace and embrace confidence in our father's love for us and in his power to provide for us. We're called to place our trust in our Heavenly Father's will for our lives and that to do that is to cast off our doubts, to cast aside all that anxiety. When we really place our trust in God, 
then we celebrate the truth that we are citizens of a kingdom that is not subject to the failures and the woes of this earthly life. We are citizens of a kingdom that does not rise and fall, but a kingdom that is eternal. And we are not just citizens. We're children of the king. That kingdom is ours. He's given it to us. John reminds us that, that this kingdom is so much more wonderful than anything we've ever known here on earth. It is so much more wonderful that we can't even imagine its beauty, its, its splendor, the ability of this, this coming kingdom to completely fulfill all our longing so that we will dwell in a perfection of joy, of peace, and of love. And there are rewards to being a child of God that are promised us. There are rewards waiting for us in that kingdom. That's another Bible study. That's another message that's, that's coming soon. But what we need to remember, friends, is that this world does not define us because we are of another spiritual nature which this world cannot embrace. So what we need to do as God's people, as God's children, is to breathe to breathe in the Holy Spirit and let all of that fear and worry just fall away from us. Focus on the love that God has poured out on you. Focus on Jesus' call for us to love one another, to encourage one another. Focus on the reality that Jesus has never left us and that he never will. Governments rise and fall. Movements die out because people lose interest in them when they realize that it, it doesn't bring contentment, peace, lasting purpose, or abundant life. Wars come and go both among people and within us. And yet we're never satisfied. And that's because only Jesus can bring that peace that satisfaction to us. Only through Christ does God offer us true reconciliation, joy, and an abundant life with real purpose and eternal rewards. No, we do not know what we will become as a nation, but I can tell you this, whatever we become after all of this has passed, will only last until the next big thing, the next big pandemic, the next war, the next big political shift. But those of us who follow Jesus know that when all is said and done, we will be like him, forever blessed and made perfect in peace and in our joy. Like the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his love, his glory, his grace. That's what we embrace as God's people. So breathe, church and trust in God's love for you. Sola gratia.